Hello everyone, it's time for another visual novel. This one, according to the marketing and promotion, could be a steamy one. No, this is just my fan, it doesn't come uh, with the box. It's the last late summer heat here, so I'm trying to keep cool. So, sympathy kiss. And for those of you who like your alternate artwork, this is the limited edition Sympathy Kiss. I'll just get the cellophane off. Now, this limited edition was sent over to me by Idea Factory International. So many thanks to them. When I saw the pictures and the promotion and the pastel colours, I thought this might not be the right visual novel for me to talk about. As you probably know by now, I'm more into novels that have a sort of strong story angle like a mystery or something supernatural or some adventure you know that sort of thing to keep my interest going while the romance develops so i assumed that this was one of those visual novels that was all otome all romance and that's it and you know what? I thought of that old adage, never judge a book by its cover. Mm. Oh yes, I had a big surprise. I will explain all that and there is a lot to talk about with this visual novel. Not because of the romance as such, because romance and love are what they always are. No, it's how they've presented it, how they've structured the story, the player progressed through it. I had a real surprise. It comes with a cute little card, which Idea Factory always does for their um, limited editions. And that's the six main male romanceable characters. Now, just to clarify what type of romance or otomo game it is... I would call it a traditional otome visual novel because it has one female and several male characters she can engage with, develop a relationship with, have a romance, fall in love. So what is Sympathy Kiss all about? You are asked to join a team who are tasked to improve the app and ensure its survival, since the company name is linked to it. And that is the office setting for the whole story. 
part of the ending of each story route has to do with how successful the team was in saving the app. I really don't want to give away any story spoilers, and there will be very little. I focus on talking about how they've done it rather than what happens in the stories. I have played a total of four romanceable characters so far, four of the story routes. I completed one version of each, and with one route, the one I just uh, finished last night, I did all the different versions of the endings you can get. Now, this is not a complicated visual novel, and I think that's a good thing, but it is not so simple that it would be boring. They've introduced a very different approach to how your story progression is organised and what type of endings you reach. It's different from any other Otome novel I have played. There may be others out there that are just as different or innovative. I wouldn't know. I obviously haven't played every visual novel out there. But I can honestly say this is the first one that took me by surprise with how different it is. Most of the time, we're used to having a character route that will allow us several different endings. We often get what's called a true ending, which is the very best and the most difficult to achieve, a good ending, a normal ending, a bad ending. And sometimes I feel that's too much. And by the time you get to the normal or a bad ending, it can get repetitive and even boring or unconvincing. You can literally see the poor writers flagging, thinking, what shall we come up with now for the bad ending? And you get stuff like, the female character is upset, she cries out, she grabs her bag, runs out of the office or the shop, into the road, straight in front of a bus, and is killed. End of female character, end of story. Splatter. Bad ending. Yeah, you think, okay, they hauled that one out from somewhere. It often doesn't even fit the story line very well. It can be sometimes a bit of a grab bag of endings, if you know what I mean, if you've ever had one of those visual novels. So a plethora of endings does not automatically mean it's a better visual novel. Quality over quantity wins every time for me. In this novel, you don't have bad endings. Who needs bad endings? The endings are determined by theme. You either follow a route that veers towards love and romance or one that focuses on work and achievement. And accordingly, you get one or the other ending. Now, this strikes me as very much in keeping with the general tenor and goal of this game. You try to achieve a balance in your life, and as we all know, balance is difficult to achieve. These endings cannot be classified as either good or bad. You will end up with a romance either way. It will just be different. Sorry, I didn't have any power to do it. I was very hard to pull it out. I was very hard to pull it out. Do you have any pain? Now, there is a third option, and that is a bit trickier to achieve, and that is what's called the perfect ending, where you need to balance both work and love very, very finely, 
After several attempts, I managed it with one route and I had to obviously go backwards and forwards a bit. There are plenty of save file slots available. And once I had tweaked my decisions along the way, I got that special ending, which is a more extended version, giving you a bit of a different conclusion. I have to say, once you get it, you know this is really nice. Even better than your ordinary romance ending. Sorry, I'm sorry. 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 Before I dive into more detail, let me find out what this company travel tumbler is. Okay. It is pink. You can never go wrong with pink. Estario, the name of the company she works for. feels quite solid. Yep, matte stainless steel inside with a solid plastic cover on top. I can honestly say I have never had such a fashionable tumbler ever in my life. You know how I sometimes complain about some limited editions that put in a sort of a special extra item? And they're sometimes, especially nowadays, really sort of cheapish, cheaply made items. Uh, well, I'm happy this is not uh, one of them. So now the box itself. Now this is a, a cute note pad. I know how the Japanese still love their paperwork. And it's quite funny, really, because our female character, she's called Akari, that's her first name. Amasawa is her family name. We always see her in the game, working at her computer furiously, or else she uses her phone. And she's got those funny little stickers she uses, and yeah, all sorts of stuff. It, this is a very, very modern game. I, I'm i not sure I ever once saw a notepad in the game, but it is cute. Yeah. So what do I mean by it's a very modern visual novel? Well, for starters, it's set in a work environment in an office, and I'm not sure we've had that crop up often in visual novels. But I mean more by modern than just the work environment. It's the way it shows us slices of life that in most other games would not have been included out of a sense of decorum, I suppose. But this game is very open about the fact that young people at some point in their lives decide to maybe move in together. They decide to live together, to have a relationship, even before they're possibly married. Yes, it that does happen, and they are acknowledging it, and as something quite normal every day. And from my point of view, that's a big advance, that's a big step forward. Now, these are little um, sort of sticky pads, you know, little notes that you can stick on your computer screen or wherever. I usually stick them in the kitchen. Uh, and I do use those a lot, especially when I read books or prepare uh, material for like videos. And it's got this uh, little character on it. I hope you can see it in the corner there. That's one of these uh, cute little emoji stickers that Akari uses a lot. So that's cute. Now here are more little stickers and, and they've got more of these cute little emoji characters on them. Okay, now we're getting to the traditionally important bits in a limited edition, the soundtrack. 
There's one disc with the music, 19 tracks, and the second disc has an audio drama on it, The Seven Wonders of a School and Evergreen After Hours. Evergreen is the pub that they regularly visit after work. And there is a translation available on the IFI website so you can follow the audio drama. Now, I will say it straight away. I will have a lot of interesting and positive things to say about this novel. Uh, But there are a few things that I'm not quite so enthusiastic about. And one of them is the soundtrack. It just didn't do it for me is all I can say. I'm not saying it's bad or anything, I can't really pronounce on that, Uh, but I turned it down mostly, um, the background music. I found it sometimes a bit intrusive, just didn't gel with me, that's all I can say. So, yeah, you might like it. It didn't really contribute anything much to the story for me. Fortunately, I did not feel the lack of uh, good music as a detracting element because the voice acting is the important thing for me in this novel. It really carries it. I'm pretty sure it's fully voiced. I can't remember there being any gaps. The voice actors are all outstanding. They brought it to life, and I cannot imagine the characters now without those specific voices. They did it so naturally. Amazing voice acting, top-notch. やりたいことがあるからこそ、人は成長し、いい仕事ができる。お前も本当は。そんな仕事を見つけたいと思ってるんじゃないのか。ああ、また距離感バグってた。ごめんごめん、悪かったって。まあ、俺たちほぼ同期みたいなもんだしな。うまくやってくるでしょ。何してるんですか。これで合ってます。勘違いしないでください。別に助けたわけじゃないんで。天沢さんが俺の視界の端で間抜けに飛び跳ねてると仕事に集中できないだけです。次からは横着しないで。そこの踏み台を使ってください。It's one of the big reasons why I enjoyed it and why I couldn't stop and played so much even though I only received it a few days ago. My switch timer thingy in the profile says I played it for at least 15 hours but since then I've played it two hours more so probably 15 to 18 hours I put in. In that time I covered the short prologue doesn't take long to get into the first major decision which route you're gonna take and then as I said I have played four character routes but for most of them I only did one ending. Now just looking at this cover again you know the the guys are all in what I would call sort of semi-seductive poses Most of the time, they're not like that at all. It's much more down-to-earth, real slice-of-life stuff most of the time. So here now is the, for me, most interesting item, as you know. I hope it's the art book. Okay, there are two books. Now, one, I think, is a diary of sorts. Boy, they really do expect me to scribble a lot, do they? 
Now this is very nicely presented. It's a sort of soft textured cover. The design is in matte and you see the guys there at work. Uh, this is far more representative of how they are most of the time. Uh, the guy at the end here, uh, I haven't done his route yet. Uh, he is not an office worker. Uh, he runs the, the pub or bar that they go to after hours. And the guy at this end here, I've only just finished his route. Uh, he's called Kobase and he is the director, the boss. Yep, there's a lot of room in here to write stuff. And the important thing is, I hope you can see it, work, love. These are the two themes which are intertwined throughout all the stories. That's the important thing. And I think on the whole, they have done it successfully. I think this is a talented writing team who have done the work for this visual novel. I have a few gripes, just a few, and I will get to those. But from what I've seen so far, they've done some great work. The problem with visual novels is that they can easily feel artificial. Artificial situations, the characters are plonked into them, then they sometimes have either strange responses or very rote, stereotyped responses. So you often feel like it, it's not really real. You know, you know, it's not real. It, it's just a story and they're trying to keep it going. And that's what surprised me with this visual novel. A lot of the time, it felt really natural. Like I've mentioned the term slice of life a lot, and I think that's important but also just the dialogue, how people are talking with each other, reacting to each other. I recognised a lot of situations. Yes, I have worked in an office myself for a number of years in the past, and I think they've captured a lot of that. While it's obviously very different in Japan, I was still able to connect to that. So that, that's a big plus in my book. So that's a very nice diary. I'm just trying to imagine going into an important meeting and saying, oh, I need to take some notes and pulling this out. So here we have the employee handbook, and that looks more like your typical hardback, probably art book. Let's have a look. So here are the contents, the usual spoiler disclaimers. And as is typical, most of the illustrations will be for the characters. Now, this is another plus of this visual novel as I see it. The artwork, the character designs are really nice. They're good, coupled with the animation. So things like eye movement, lip movement, they've done very well for the conversations, the dialogues. So this is Sao Tome. I would think most people would be drawn to doing his route early on because he's such an extrovert character. He's considered a bit of a genius, but also a bit eccentric by his um, co-workers. So he's an interesting and enjoyable character. And he's beautifully presented, I have to say. They somehow managed to make the characters on screen, there's sort of a bit of a, a luminous quality about how they're presented. You can obviously do that on a screen. And on the OLED screen, it looks really beautiful. So I've done a Sao Thomas route. I was probably expecting an awful lot. and. It turned out to be okay, but I wouldn't say it's my favourite route or one of the most memorable. Uh, this is Minato, a character whose route I have not done yet, uh, but I've obviously got to know him a bit uh, through the interactions in the office. He's almost the opposite to Sao Tome, so uh, those two are sort of almost opposites of each other.
which creates a really nice dynamic. So those two spar an awful lot and they're constantly ribbing and teasing each other, even telling each other off, but always in a good natured way. So that is actually, it's one of the little slice of life things that is really fun to follow. And I did uh, chuckle at their exchanges. Now, while you get to know their personalities um, quite quickly, the important thing is they're not trapped in that stereotype of just having, uh, you know, one or two aspects to their character. For each character and each route, there is a, what I would say, a bit of a background issue or even mystery and that makes it more exciting especially as you gallop towards the ending to follow through as i said i do like a strong story and something that will carry the narrative along and so far almost all the roots have had that some more than others but it's always been interesting uh, this is the director kubasi uh, whose route i just uh, finished and he's considered rather stern but fair by his employees, and he is definitely a workaholic. So I was kind of intrigued how a relationship with that boss would actually turn out and work for our somewhat shy and not overly confident female lead, Akari. Now, I have to mention one thing. When you start the game, you notice straight away that the story is told in the first person from Akari's viewpoint. So you are obviously meant to identify with her, to be immersed in her story, to empathize with her. That works well on the whole, I would say. The only problem I encountered was that there is no proper visual representation for Akari. She does crop up in certain scenes when the romance heats up a bit and you know uh, we're working towards a kiss here. You might see her in one of those CG screenshots, but she has no eyes. She is a character with a sort of almost blank face. Now, I know why they've done this, because you're supposed to put yourself in her place. But come on, her hairstyle is very detailed. You can see she is a sort of smallish, petite young woman with a sort of dark blonde, longish hair that's sort of plaited at the back or, you know, knotted up. But not having any eyes... I'm sorry, I found it just a little bit creepy at times. I wish they wouldn't do that. Either don't show her at all, or just present her as you, the artist, see her. As readers, we all have a perfectly good imagination and can put ourselves in her place. If the writing is good enough and the visuals are good enough, then that will work, I think. Now I want to talk about Tainaka. He's on the right. Korbasi is not his boss, by the way. Tainaka's route I enjoyed tremendously, probably because it was so very unexpected. Tainaka, to put it bluntly, is a sponger. I was confused. This is a romance character? Is this gonna be icky? Well, Tainaka turns out to be a bit like an overgrown puppy, very much in need of a lot of hugging and affection. But slowly Akari learns there is also a different side to him. And the journey of finding out about Tainaka's darker past, I found to be well-written and emotionally rewarding. I'll just mention here that in many of the stories, I was surprised to find that uh, both school bullying 
and the long-lasting effects of uh, malicious rumours and gossip uh, played a significant part. In context, his apparently strange behaviour takes on quite a different meaning. Uh, This story is a good example for what I mentioned earlier, uh, that we are shown two young people living together in the same apartment, and even at times sharing a bed. At no point, however, are the visuals ever unduly suggestive or a breach what I would call good taste. However, ultimately that is, of course, a personal threshold. Uh, the game is rated for ages 13 plus in North America. In Europe, it has a Peggy 12 rating. However, the German USK rating is 18. Okichatta? <laughs> Phone text messages play quite an important part in the game and just occasionally you have to uh, input a response which gets incorporated into uh, the flavour of how the relationship develops. It's all very, very nicely done. The whole design approach is very good. So I hope that has given you a good idea what's in the limited edition. You have a very compact and very nicely designed box with your traditional hardback art book, very well presented, just the right size as well, it's not too small, a very prettily designed diary book, the soundtrack plus audio drama, some little extras in the form of notepads and stickers, Once again, very nice attention to detail. And the important thing, they're little extras, but they are actually useful. And I think that's important. I like limited editions where I don't keep everything in the box and that's it, where I actually take out certain things and use them. I think that's the right way to go. The Switch game itself, of course, comes with the box. And... There is the tumbler, the pink Estario tumbler. I'm not an expert on tumblers at all, but it looks very well made to me and well presented. Once again, a highly usable item. It fits in with the whole theme of work and work and personal life balance. That's what this game is all about. And we'll do a bit of a deep dive into how this actually works in the story routes in a separate companion video. As always, thank you very much for your time. I hope you found this both useful and entertaining. Please keep well. I'm Food for Dogs. Bye bye.